rolling shutter is the creator's mortal enemy. Whether you're shooting stills or video, it distorts your picture. It adds crazy flickering to it. I'm going to tell you what causes rolling shutter and how to fix it. First, let's start with the three main effects of rolling shutter. Let me just change a camera setting and you'll be able to see it right behind me. This is awful, right? This sort of banding can appear in either stills or video. And it's caused because the lights behind me are newfangled LED lights and they actually flicker very, very fast. And they might flicker multiple times or even more than a hundred times while you're taking a photo or a frame of video. Let me fix this and we'll talk about the next effect. Rolling shutter can make everything in the frame tilt to the side if you do a sudden camera movement like a whip pan in video or tracking a moving subject side to side like you might in auto racing or wildlife photography. The third type of rolling shutter distortion is when the subject is moving rapidly in the frame. If the subject moves while the camera is trying to read the sensor, it can become distorted. That's why helicopters and propellers look really wonky in video sometimes. It can even happen in still photography. Chelsea took this picture of a hummingbird and look at the wing. It's not supposed to look like that. I'm going to tell you how to fix those problems when they do come up and also what causes them. But first, I want to explain that really cool footage I just showed. I got it all from Storyblocks. Storyblocks is the complete stock solution, providing an unlimited library of over 1 million royalty-free, high-quality video, audio, and still images. The music you heard, direct from Storyblocks. Those video clips, direct from Storyblocks. I'll use their still photos to create animations or illustrations in our books. Before Storyblocks was a sponsor, I signed up for their basic subscription plan and started dropping B-roll into our news videos to make them a little more interesting. It made me more effective as a video creator because I didn't have to go make those videos myself and it added a bunch of production value really easily and quickly. If you really want to be efficient, the unlimited plan is useful because you can download 20, 30 things even if you only use a handful of them. Sign up for Storyblocks using this link also in the description down below and I promise it'll make you a better, more efficient, more successful creator. Now let's talk about how rolling shutter works. Your camera doesn't actually see the entire picture all at once. It reads the picture from the top to the bottom a little at a time. Video clips like this where I'm just standing here, you're not going to see any effects of rolling shutter. It might technically be there, but it's so slight you wouldn't notice it. That's why portrait photographers don't tend to worry about rolling shutter. So how do you fix it? Why can't you just make a camera sensor that reads everything all at once? Well, you kind of can. That's the ideal. That's called a global shutter. And there are cameras that do this, especially for video oriented subjects. The Red Komodo is about $6,000. It's a lot more than the cameras that we use to film, right? Thus, most of us creators are still going to end up having to deal with rolling shutter. To understand the usefulness of global shutters, let's simulate a whip pan. With the global shutter, we can pull a frame from the middle of the whip pan and the buildings are perfectly vertical. With the conventional shutter, the buildings have moved between the time it starts reading at the top to the time it reaches the bottom, meaning the buildings are now tilted. Here's a whip pan I found on Storyblocks that shows a very natural amount of rolling shutter. You're probably so accustomed to seeing rolling shutter in movies and TV that you didn't even notice these lines aren't vertical. I bet you'll notice from now on. Now, some of you still photographers will be saying, I could just use the mechanical shutter. The mechanical shutter doesn't have rolling shutter problems. That's actually not true at all. To understand that, we need to talk about the sensor readout speed. This is the time it takes for the sensor to start reading the top of the frame to getting all the way down to the bottom of the frame. Cameras with a global shutter, like that red Komodo, will have a readout time of zero seconds. Really fast, Electronic shutters, like those in the Canon R3 and the Sony Alpha 1, or mechanical shutters, will have a readout speed of about 1 to 40th of a second. The very popular Canon R5 that Chelsea used to take that hummingbird picture with, it has an electronic shutter readout speed of about 1 60th of a second. The Nikon Z7 Mark II has a much longer readout speed of about 1 15th of a second. The Sony a7R4 with its 60 megapixels was processing so much data that it takes about a tenth of a second. This ruby-throated hummingbird flaps her wings about 50 times a second. Let's photograph her with an electronic shutter that has a readout speed of about 1 30th of a second. 
Ugh, the body looks okay, but the fast moving wings are completely distorted. Let's switch to a Sony A1 or Canon R3 that has a readout speed of about 1 to 40th, eight times faster. Oh, that's much better. You could get similar results with a mechanical shutter. You wouldn't see the jaggedness in a real photo. Again, all these cameras have different readout speeds for the electronic shutter or the mechanical shutter. The mechanical shutter literally has a shutter that moves down, revealing only a small window when you're using fast shutter speeds. Thus, the mechanical shutter exposes the entire sensor for the shutter speed that you specify, such as one two thousandths of a second. It just doesn't happen to be the same one two thousandths of a second. Electronic shutters work the same way. Each part of the sensor receives the exact same total exposure time, but it's not the same time as we move through it. Check out how each of these readout speeds affects the appearance of an LED light that I have at a very fast shutter speed. You can see the longer the readout speed, the more bands there are. That's because the light is flickering on at a fixed rate and each time it flickers on and then off, it creates one stripe. That LED light flicked on and off more than a hundred times while the Sony a7R4 was collecting information from its electronic shutter. Now that you understand what rolling shutter can do and what causes it, let's talk about how to fix it. First, in video, get a camera with a global shutter. You could also use a very long shutter speed to blur that out a little bit more. So if you happen to be using the 180 rule where your shutter speed is twice the exposure time, well, at 1 24th of a second, you'd have a shutter speed of about 1 50th and any props or lights behind me are probably gonna be completely blurred out, thus, the motion will be completely invisible to the movie viewers. If you're dealing with whip pans and you have tilty buildings, there are plugins that can reduce or eliminate that if you want it. These plugins require a little bit of cropping, so be sure to shoot your footage a little bit wider and plan to crop in a little bit tighter. Now let's talk about how you can fix rolling shutter effects in still photos. The number one rule is to use the mechanical shutter whenever you can, but mechanical shutters make noise. And this is the mirrorless era. People love silent photography. In fact, in so many environments like golf, silent photography is an absolute requirement. But in golf, you have somebody swinging the club really, really fast. And thus, the rolling shutter effect can make that golf club look all warpy and that's super bad. One way to work around that while using a silent electronic shutter is to get a really expensive camera like the Sony Alpha 1 or the Canon R3. They both have electronic shutters with really fast readout and thus some problem mostly solved. Those fast readout speeds or the mechanical shutter will also fix the banding that you might see when taking pictures under artificial lights. For example, if you're taking pictures of your kid's indoor basketball game at night and the lights are LED and they tend to flicker, you'll get that weird banding in your still photos and it can be really distracting. If that doesn't fix it sufficiently for you, use a longer shutter speed, just like you would in video. Try to drive it down from one two thousandths of a second to one one thousandth or one five hundredth. For a lot of cameras, you really need to be at like one one twenty fifth or one sixtieth of a second to completely eliminate it, but it does depend on your camera. So go ahead and do some experimenting at the beginning of any sports shoot to see what your ideal shutter speed is. Some cameras will also have a flicker reduction mode. Look, all the anti-flicker does is it waits until the flickering lights come on and then it takes the picture. But if the lights flicker on and off multiple times while the shutter is open, it's not gonna make any difference. You're still gonna get banding. Some popular sports cameras like the R6 that I'm filming us on, the Canon R5, the Fuji X-T3, the X-T4, they offer much higher frame rates when you're shooting with electronic shutters. For example, the X-T3 and X-T4 will do 30 frames per second with the electronic shutter, but a much slower number when you engage the mechanical shutter. And thus, photographers are forced to choose between high frame rates with the electronic shutter along with the negative effects of the rolling shutter or mechanical shutters that reduce the rolling shutter but also reduce the frames per second. I'm hoping this video has taught you the effects of each so you can better make that important choice. In the comments down below, I'd love to hear your experiences with rolling shutter. When has it messed up your photos and how have you learned to work around it? Did you upgrade your camera to a super expensive camera just to try to reduce it a little bit? I'm Tony Northrup. Don't forget to subscribe to see lots of photo and video tutorials, camera reviews, and much more. And of course, thanks to our sponsor, Storyblocks, you have to check them out. Whether you're a photo or still creator, they have an amazing amount of content that can make you so much more efficient. I don't think I could do YouTube without them. Bye.